everyone welcome back this is Crystal Lynn with Emerson Aurora Design and today I have a nine ounce baby bottle from Stainless Steel Depot um, it's a hog tumbler and I base painted it uh, this gold metallic and I taped off the top of electrical tape before spraying and now I'm going to do a tack it method using the easy tack by Krylon spray on paint I'll be using this beautiful gold glue -it glitter named Herbert by Little Lee and Rose Glitters. Normally, I use the acrylic, or I'm sorry, the, the resin method to apply my glitters, but I really wanted this to lay flat, and I'm trying to make this peekaboo bottle lighter than my normal tumblers that are peekaboo. So I already sprayed the Easy Tack glue on and I am sprinkling this beautiful gold glitter. Um, again it's Herbert by Little Lee and Rose. You want to be generous. Um, The repositional spray adhesive is nice for this thin, or I'm sorry, fine cut glitter because it holds on tight. I'm going to make sure you cover every inch of this. This glitter has a holographic um, note to it. It's really pretty. This will be the peekaboo honey colored glitter on this bottle. You tap off your excess and you'll be about ready to go. Now we're going to burnish this down. You just rub your finger on it and it will lay that glitter flat. It helps that glitter to lay real flat and tight to the cup and it gives a beautiful holographic rainbow effect. I was trying to limit the amount of layers of epoxy that I have to put on this bottle because again it's for a baby and I don't want it to be extremely heavy. You can already see that rainbow showing through. Take your time with this. It is a little meticulous um, but it's so <laughs> so satisfying it is so pretty burnished glitter is so pretty you can see that rainbow holographic effect There were a couple spots on this bottle. I think I may have started the glittering process before my Easy Tack spray glue was dry. It did leave a couple of um, thin spots. I don't show it, but I do go back and add another layer later and it backfired on me, so I just cut that out of this. My ultimate goal was to just have the thinnest possible glitter layer. Usually with my honey bee cups, I will use a mixture of fine and chunky glitters to give dimension and sparkle to that peekaboo. You'll see what I do here in just a bit to add a little bit of chunky. Chunky glitter takes so many layers of resin to cover and make smooth that I did not want to cover this whole bottle with chunky glitter. And there we go. You can kind of see this couple of the spots that have, were bare, but I'll fix that here in a little bit. So here I am going to remove that um, layer of tape, but because I had the easy tack with the glitter over it, I was afraid to peel up the glitter, so I'm just scoring the tape at the edge of the glitter line to have a clean line when I pull that tape up.
and doing this did help it have a nice clean edge. Tape and gloves don't mix. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thumbs up. So here I am, it's on my turner. I am going to retape that top threaded area so no resin sits there. I want that lid to fit securely. I'm just using electric black electrical tape for this. I like the elasticity it has. Here I'm going to use quick set um, fast curing epoxy resin from the glittercraze.com. I love this for my under layers. It helps my, um, my process go so much quicker. This is not a UV resistant resin, however. Um, so at the end I do have to add a longer curing resin. But for these steps over the glitter, they work, it works perfectly. Make sure you put a fairly good layer of resin to cover the glitter. Because I burnished this glitter down, I didn't really even have to sand it after this layer. It looked beautiful, um, the resin didn't have any bubbles, and the glitter was all laying flat. Make sure you get your bottom. You can see those kind of wet spots where the spray glue kind of had a different effect on that glitter, which I, for this cup I don't really mind. I want it to be more organic. Um, I want it to look like honey. Here's a couple chunky glitters that I'm going to add. This one is from glittercraze.com. And this is a little gold mix and there's that Herbert again. Um, I decided to use sprinkle some of the Herbert on those wet spots just to give it a little more sparkle. Um, like I was saying, the gold underneath the peekaboo, this will all be under a peekaboo. Um, I'm okay with it having that different textures because it's supposed to look like honey in a honeycomb. So I was okay with that. I'm going to just sprinkle some of this chunky glitter this is a little mix that I have made myself. Um, sprinkling it randomly so that those big chunks do lay flat. It did a really good job of holding on to the resin, held on to that glitter and pulled it down and I didn't have any uh, of the chunky glitters popping up through to where I would need to sand a lot. So that was nice. This is Chesterfield from Glitter Craze. Uh, it actually has pieces in it that really does remind me of honey, honeycomb, um, a pearlescent orange yellow that just, it just really is really pretty. It's hard to see it in this video right here, but up close, um, the glitter is really pretty and it looked like honey to me. Those glitter chunks are actually hexagons, so going with the honeycomb theme. Always remember to remove your tape. I'm bad about that. So I'm going to let this spin. I actually let it spin for about six hours. In the meantime, I'm going to cut out my honeycomb shapes on my Cricut. These are just some shapes that I had found. Um, I think I actually got the file from littleleanrose.com. They have a file section that they share. So you can use any color um, vinyl for this. This is a peekaboo, so you'll be spray painting over it. I just chose different sizes of honeycomb so that there was different textures. And that's so satisfying pulling that off. <laughs> Does anyone else get any satisfaction from weeding their vinyl? <laughs> 
I must be strange. So when you're laying your honeycomb, a real honeycomb has the points facing up and down. So that's just a little uh, interesting note if you're making a honeybee honeycomb cup. It's hard to do this one-handed here. <laughs> So anywhere that the sticker goes on, the vinyl goes on, will actually be the glitter. So there's some different shapes that I used. I'm just going to go through and put them on. I have negative and positive honey, honeycombs. And here it is spray painted. I took it out and I spray painted it with my Krylon white uh, semi-gloss paint. This is my favorite part. I love doing the alcohol inks. Um, I use several different colors. There's an orange by Pinata, dandelion, and a yellow by Pinata, as well as a custom alcohol ink I made. These are makeup sponges from the Dollar Tree. Uh, I just cut them in half to um, save on waste. And I don't like having sharp edges when I do my stamping. So take a pair of scissors and just kind of rough up those corners, round them out. You can add little holes in them. It does add texture. Um, when you're doing alcohol ink, um, it's better to have that, I believe. Um, so just kind of cut the corners off so you don't have little squares hatched all over. Um, so I was saying I love doing alcohol ink um, stamping, I guess you call it, I'm not sure. But um, I love how the colors blend together and they just look so, they look more and more beautiful the more you do it. So I just want to add a few drops on one of the makeup brushes, the makeup sponges. Wear gloves when you do this, otherwise you'll be colored like an Easter egg. And then I just dab around. I do leave white spots um, so that I can blend those colors together. Right now, um, that's a pretty alarming yellow color. <laughs> but as you see, the more colors that I add, um, it does take on a look of honey. And that is the fun part. Make sure you get the bottom. I must have had a piece of glitter or something there. I am a messy crafter, <laughs> as you can probably see. This is the custom yellow I made. It's kind of an orangish yellow. We'll see how it helps change. less pigmented. The pinata, pinata alcohol inks are very, very pigmented alcohol inks, but sometimes I like to have it more toned down. So just go back and forth between your colors till you see the color you want taking shape. This bottle was a little hard to hold on to. That's why I left the pool noodle in. Um, it was just <laughs> easy to drop. It's a very small little bottle. And there's the orange. The orange, to me, is what makes it. I put the orange on and I blend it together with that yellow. And then it will turn into a honey color. The honeybee tumblers are one of my favorite ones to make. They're really popular too. There's some 91% isopropyl alcohol in a little spray bottle. You want to take a little spray. I hold the bottle. You can't see here, but I hold the bottle kind of far back and just give a little spritz. It will cause little spots to form. You can kind of see there. And you just dab with your sponge. And there we are. I went back and forth, back and forth the alcohol inks and the spray and it just makes it gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. On these cups I do not seal my alcohol ink after doing it. I don't mind that the alcohol inks may move a little 
when I put my epoxy on. It just adds to that organic look. But if you want to spray seal it, you can. This is my favorite part. I love doing peekaboos. They are like my signature cup now. And as you can see, I go through a couple different <laughs> tools here to try to figure out how best to grab that uh, vinyl. I think I used permanent vinyl by mistake. So my weeding tool and my tweezers weren't working the greatest. Um, I eventually just go to my X-Acto knife and it pulls off just fine. Just be careful. You don't want to scratch the painted spots um, that aren't don't have your vinyl under. Um, you, with alcohol inks so though you can fix them. You can go back later with a little bit of alcohol or a little bit of alcohol ink and clean that up. So you can see I've made some progress. I've skipped ahead a little and there I am. I scratched that right up but I believe it was under or over top of the vinyl. Be careful if you're using an X-Acto knife. Um, point it away from your hand. You don't want a horrible accident from crafting accident. As you can see the beautiful glitter poking through and that to me is my, it's just so satisfying. Got a little bit of a better rhythm now with this X-Acto knife that did help. Um, removable uh, vinyl is probably the best to use for peekaboos but I buy my vinyl from all different places and I order online through Amazon and honestly I don't know which one that I have is which. So here I am. Um, I am going to add a little bit of Midas Touch Microfine Glitter from the GlitterCraze.com into top layer of resin. <laughs> At first I totally had forgotten to put the glitter in so you can see there's no glitter in this little top section but I'll go back and put that glitter in. I was just too impatient I guess. I actually accidentally added way too much of this glitter. A little of this goes a long way. And at first I was like, oh man, I ruined it. But you see later that it just turned out gorgeous. I guess you can't go wrong with glitter. There's no such thing as too much glitter. <laughs> at least that's my motto. <laughs> This cup was remarkably smooth. It didn't. I didn't even believe that I had to sand this cup once. So I was pretty satisfied with that. That doesn't happen too often because I love chunky glitter. <laughs> A little bit of a close-up. So pretty. Look at that sparkle. Oh my goodness. Here I'm just using my torch to pop some bubbles. Don't let the torch sit too long. On your resin it will burn it. And here we are. I'm sorry for the lighting. It's not the brightest on my desk, but we are going to add my final decals. I was trying to remember what exactly I was doing here. I think I was just showing how <laughs> I uh, measure to see where I want the little uh, Pooh Bear, the honey pot to go um, so that I can uh, print them out the right size. So here's my little honey pot and my little honey bees. There's little honey bees on the Pooh Bear, but those didn't cut out very well, so I actually didn't use the ones that are around his nose. I used the other ones. So we're going to go to make it. I am doing print and cut. Turn your mirror on because actually no. I think I had that on there because I was originally going to do a water slide and I mirrored it but I didn't. I ended up not doing that. So don't mirror if you're going to do printable vinyl. This is printable vinyl. I'm sorry that's in there. 
So here I am with the um, little Pooh Bear. He's so cute. I lay him down and then gently rub one side to the other to get any air bubbles out. And he worked out pretty well. This is a pretty curved surface. It not only is a curved cylinder, it also has a bit of a curve from the top to the bottom. And he's just precious. I'm going to take my tweezers and peel off the little bees. They're just the cutest little thing. I found both uh, the bees I found on online and the honey pot Pooh Bear I found on um, Etsy. I just searched for Winnie the Pooh. So here I am. I decided after I put the Pooh down, I decided to do the name on the opposite side before I laid down the bees so that I knew that I had enough room for this name. This is for baby Amelia. And now I'm going to lay down the rest of the bees so that I can make sure that they're visible and not covered by anything. This is a fun part. I love being creative. Place little bees all around. So precious. And here it is after I did put two layers of vine, or, um, resin on after. Final product is gorgeous. If you like this, please press the like button, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much.